Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, live at CrowdStrike's Falcon 23 from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante, and we're very pleased to welcome the protector, the CrowdStrike protector of the year from Salesforce, Kelly McCracken, SVP Detection and Response. Kelly, great to have you. Congratulations on Salesforce being the protector of the year. That's a big award. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm very excited to receive the award on behalf of my team. You were on a panel um, with uh, other CISOs and folks or during the main stage uh, presentation this morning. We caught part of it. Give us a little bit of a recap for anybody that didn't catch that. What were some of the main things that you talked about and, and sort of tell us about Salesforce's security posture? Yeah, so um, one of the things we talked about was you know, securing the cloud, and I think one of the most important things when you are thinking about cloud security is really the shared security model. Uh, I think to me, people go to a cloud security provider and think that they've pushed the responsibility to the cloud provider, which they have for the most part, but there is the shared security model. And one of the biggest threats out there is the misconfigurations that people have within their cloud deployments. And so really what Salesforce likes to do is make sure that we are providing our customers all the knowledge and making it as easy as possible to make sure that they're configuring uh, their side of the sh uh, their Salesforce product. The other thing is um, making sure that you are partnering partnering with everyone in the industry because this is an important, um, you know, years ago we didn't always partner as well as we do today. And so I think that having these partnerships with your vendors where you can really help make the partners better by partnering with them from building their products. At Salesforce we have a very complex and diverse environment that a lot of vendors have not seen before. So, you know, working with CrowdStrike and having uh, their partnership has not only made them better, but it has made us better as well. So Salesforce has always been very security conscious. You're kind of a pain in a good way, as a user. You always make me change my password every few months, right? Which is you're one of the few SaaS platforms that actually forces that. So that's a good thing, even though it's annoying at the mo in the moment. <laughs> and also you just sort of forced multi-factor authentication, but not with SMS, which is another good thing. I wish my, my bank would do that. You, you know, kind of forced with a third party authenticator, which again, you know, just sort of underscores your focus on security. I wonder if you could talk about the culture of security at Salesforce. You have an interesting title, it's SVP of detection and response, and what the regime looks like within Salesforce to handle security. Sure, so trust is the number one value at Salesforce. It is the forefront of everything we do. Right now, we are, the number one AI CRM, and to do that, we had to make sure that our customers trusted our platform. We have a, uh, a very large detection response team that is world class. We have structured ourselves so that we are being a threat intel driven organization. I have a team of engineers that sit within my organization that are building for no one else except for my threat management team and my security response um, center. So we, set ourselves up from a strategy perspective every year, identifying what are our top threats? What are we trying to defend against? And then identifying where do we have any of those gaps? Not just from a protection standpoint, but from a detection and a response perspective. So uh, we leverage a, um, our threat management team, which includes a data science team that's focused on our artificial intelligence capability. We have a threat intelligence team, a threat detection team, and a, a team that's looking at, at the abuse of Salesforce platforms. And they're working to provide us the information that we need to make sure that we're defending against the, the top threat actors. My security response center, the Salesforce security response center, is where my incident responders, my defenders live. And they are working very closely hand in hand to understand what the threats are from the threat intelligence that we provide so that they are ready in the event that we see a threat actor um, targeting Salesforce to be able to respond in the, the right way. Is there a CISO title at Salesforce? There's a, uh, we have a chief trust officer, Vikram okay. Rao. And you report to the chief trust officer? I report uh, up through um, the, we have a security, but, yeah. But ultimately yeah, it goes Yeah, ultimately up to, to chief trust and, officer. And, and that de facto CISO or CSO, chief trust officer, reports where? He reports into the uh, president of engineering for Salesforce, and who then reports to so, so uh, the, Mark Benioff. The platform engineer, and yep. then into Mark. Okay. So huh? we, we, we bring, because security is so important, and trust is our number one value, it is important for us to have security sit side by side with those uh, engineers that are developing the products. I'm kind of a Mark fanboy, I, but I don't, I don't, and I, so I listen to him when he speaks. 
I don't hear him talking about security a ton, but I, I would imagine it's coming from the top. Yeah, uh, Mark definitely has a vested interest in making sure that we keep Salesforce secure. He's very values driven, and as I said, you know, trust being our number one value. He always is understanding he's what, how are we securing our product, and we're not going to go to market unless we are sure that we have secured Salesforce. Question for you, I was telling you before we went live that I, I went into my hot tub store over the weekend, this little Sundance Falls in California, and they just started using Salesforce, and they, oh, do you, have you heard of it? Yeah, I think I've heard of that. But Salesforce serves customers in a variety of industries with varying security requirements. How does the company tailor its incident response approach to meet the needs of different types of customers based on industry? So that's an interesting question. You have to really think about how as you said, how is the customer using our product? Not everyone uses it from a, a CRM perspective. They are using it for a um, variety of things. I use it as my case management system for security incident response. I use Service Cloud. So um, you have to think about how they're using it and think about the threats that may be targeting them. Salesforce has a, you know, we have a unique position for our customers to understand who may be targeting them. They're not trying to get Salesforce. The threat actors want our, our, our really interested in our customers. So we partner with our customers to try to share information with them um, so that they understand uh, you know, what, what they may be seeing so that they can start protecting themselves on the other side of the shared security model. Um, you know, everyone is a Salesforce customer whether they know it or not because our customers, customers, data is being stored with us and everyone is a customer of one of our customers. You have a long history in AI. You mentioned it up on the stage today. What how would you describe that, that history, and how has the AI heard around the world last November uh, uh, made you think differently, or have you, are you thinking about it differently, enhance uh, your, 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 your vision at all? I wonder if you could discuss that a, a yes, bit. Yes, from a detection response perspective, we've used AI for years. We've been helping protect our customers uh, with their detection uh, on their side of the shared security model through our uh, Shield product. And so we've been doing AI for a long time. But when we brought it in-house in and said, how can we use AI, everyone was really excited over the last year. And I had a ton of people on my team come to me and saying, I want to do this with AI, I want to do that with AI. I had to kind of pause them for a minute and said, let's think about this from a strategic standpoint. What can we solve that we're not already solving? Let's not continue to solve the same problem over and over again that we can solve with automation. What are the problems that we can solve with AI and let's focus on those because that's where we need to improve if we want to really improve the, the you know, mean time to respond and have enha enhanced detection. So we took a, a, a bunch of time to really come up with that strategy and now we're implementing that strategy, um, but partnering AI with automation in addition to workflows. Do you think in the fullness of time, to borrow kind of an Andy Jassy statement, that AI is going to be more beneficial to attackers or defenders? Two, two part question, near term and long term. So I think that um, you know, anything that is for good can be used for bad. It's one of the things that keeps me up at night is worrying about how these advanced threat actors are going to, not even advanced threat actors, uh, a kid, a high school kid yeah. can now be a, be considered an advanced threat actor towards all of us because he's, he has everything at his fingertips. So, in the near term, I think the, the, the adversaries are going to have a one-up on us. Um, long term, I think we will catch up, but then we're, they're going to pivot to something. There's going to be a new technology that comes out and we're going to be in the same boat. So um, it's a little bit of a cat in the mouse thing at the moment, but I think you know, we've, made, we've made it easier for incident responders, but we've made it a lot easier for the adversaries because they, they just have to be right one time. We have to be right all the time. Salesforce are always, uh, very acquisitive company, has made a number of key acquisitions. How does that affect how you think about your, your role and what kind of challenges that brings and how do you deal with those challenges? So when I think about my role, I, I take it very seriously as I set up on stage. Um, I am protecting all of our data, including my own, and that's important. And I think that when I'm looking at how to do that, I have to think about what's the fastest way, as uh, George mentioned, we're getting down to like single digits that we have to be able to detect and respond. And so I need to look at what's my strategy around being able to enable my team to do that. And so, you know, whether it's AI, automation, or um, 
partnering with vendors like CrowdStrike, you have to look at that, that whole strategy and not look at them individually because bringing them all together will be much more powerful. Do you, how much of your time do you spend on sort of protecting Salesforce and its customers as, as opposed to uh, protecting Salesforce with its own sort of other SaaS offerings and other you know, capabilities that you guys bring? I don't think you could say it's a, um, one or the other. It's, it's a whole thing, because if I'm not focused on my SaaS providers, my vendors, and how they are securing on their side and how we're securing our side of the shared security model with them, then I'm putting my customers at risk. So it's a comprehensive approach to security. It's not one or the other. I have to do it ha all together. Have you ever had to like tap a SaaS vendor in the shoulder and say, hey guys, you got to like, some best practice here, let's talk. I, I think, <laughs> you know, not necessarily from best, best practices, but I think Log4j was an interesting yeah, um, yeah. case where I had vendors coming to me saying, when are you guys going to be patched? And I, and I had to go back to them and say, I can't be patched until you're patched. <laughs> so it was a cir circular like relationship. Yeah. We were all asking each other, but we were all waiting on each other to get patched so we could fully say we're patched. Mm. How much, how well known is the shared security model within the customer base? Is there still a lot of education and awareness that needs to go on there? Unfortunately, I think there is. Uh, I've had a bunch of people come up to me since the panel being like, can you tell me more about the shared security model? The security practitioners don't know it. When, when companies go out to buy a cloud service offering, it's usually the IT department, the CIO that's buying. They implement it. The security department's not thinking about like, wait, what's our role in making sure that that product, we now move that to, the, to that provider, but they have a role. So I don't think that a lot of people know about it from the security perspective. We, at Salesforce, like I said, we are doing as much as we can to provide that enablement out to the customers. But the security teams really need to think through this as well, and not just rely on their CIO or their IT department to, to to think through all the different um, vectors. Well, George showed the, that wall in this morning during his keynote that separates traditionally security from IT. How is Salesforce approaching that differently to really help those teams come together and then maybe be a great example for some of your customers? Right, so we have, um, we leverage business information security officers. They actually sit in my team. They are helping to be at the table with our CIO. So we have them with every business unit, but we have um, a senior leader that is partnering with our CIO to make sure that we are having that partnership, that we have a seat at the table, that we're bringing issues to them, that we're listening to what's going on in our CIO's um, office of CIO and bringing that back to security so we can have that partnership. When we do our strategic plan at the beginning of the year, which we call a V2 mom, we are partnering with them, understanding like here, is where we need to focus from a security perspective. How can you fit this into your plans from an IT perspective? And vice versa, this is where they want to go. How do we fit that into our, because you can't have the conflict, conflicting between the two teams. You need to be strong collaborators. Exactly. Excellent. What's next for Salesforce, threat detection and response? Obviously a big event going on in, in Vegas in the last week or so, but what are some of the things that, that we can expect to see, especially with the power of CrowdStrike? You know, I would say that we will continue to partner with CrowdStrike. I, the things that got released today were very interesting to me, um, very exciting. I want to go back to my team and ask, like, how can we use this? I think it's it's you know looking at the agent, having multiple agents on an endpoint really slows things down. So seeing that CrowdStrike is focusing not on just being you know the EDR that they might made us start it with ten plus years ago, but looking at how can they be a data platform, much like Salesforce. We're a platform, and we're a platform to help our customers connect with their customers. And so um, I think you know, continuing to par partner with CrowdStrike and our other vendors to see how can we come up with this comprehensive strategy and all work together um, towards a 100% you know, solution. How will you determine if, if what we saw today on stage with Charlotte is something that you can utilize? So, you know, I talked about my AI strategy at the beginning that I'm working with on my team, and I don't want to recreate the wheel. Um, Salesforce has done a lot with AI, but you know, there's a lot of, for AI for security operations that we can do that CrowdStrike has. I need to look at, see how I can build Charlotte possibly into my AI strategy. I don't want to keep um, leveraging my resources internally to do something that I could get from a vendor, 
but there may be things that I can do from an AI perspective that CrowdStrike can't do because there, you know, Salesforce has unique challenges. Mm -hmm. And so I want to use my resources to focus on the unique challenges of Salesforce and use my vendors to focus on the challenges that we all have across the industry. So you got to do some work there and yeah. figure that out, yeah. Good strategy. Yeah. Kelly, congratulations again on Salesforce Thank being so the much. CrowdStrike Protector of the Year. It's a, a very big accomplishment. We appreciate you coming on the program really describing Salesforce's security posture and how you're really working and partnering with CrowdStrike and vice versa. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. For Kelly McCracken and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, covering CrowdStrike Falcon 23. Stick around, our next guest joins us in just a minute.